Hello, everybody, and welcome to Seeds of Liberty podcast, episode 37. We're going to go with Jeremy for the Bipcot NoGov license. Yes, as always, the Seeds of Liberty podcast is covered by the Bipcot No Government license. This allows for reuse by anyone except for governments and the agents thereof. You can find out more information about that at bipcot.org. So we got uh, Jared Howe coming back. Uh, Jerry One, uh, the anarchist volunteers rapper. Uh, we're going to discuss uh, the Syrian refugee crisis, uh, immigration, and the Paris attacks. Those fun uh, topics that are uh, dominating Facebook you, and social media. You know, you know, before the show, Jerry told me that all he needs is two turntables and a microphone to discuss refugees. I think he's putting words in my mouth at this point. <laughs> I, I, I will have to second that. He said, <laughs> he said, I can just rap about some riffs. <laughs> so, so um, I, I mean, I, I read the uh, the Lou Rockwell, uh, you know, famous now, maybe infamous uh, <laughs> article on was it the assault on private property, uh, which uh, yeah, it was very interesting. And I think, and I think uh, Molyneux takes a similar position, right, with. Uh, you know, keep the keep the immigrants out, right? Because they're going to burden our tax system and increase welfare and overburden the uh, tax I'm actually cattle. Not able like to that. comment on that. I haven't. I've I've been asked about the Lou Rockwell article because of uh, language I've used, but I haven't read it. I'm not even aware of it. I'm aware of it. I got about a paragraph in, and then just was like, I already know where he's going with this. Well, you, it involved reading, Dave, so we know it's okay. Um, <laughs> Fair enough. Um, I well I, I did I did read the uh, I did read the uh, the Rockwell piece. It was actually it was a speech he gave um, at the Mises Circle. I think at the beginning it was actually I believe it was actually before the Paris attacks. It just ended up, you know, the timing of him putting it into it, putting the the text the transcript into a, an article and, and putting it up on Mises, um, ended up right after you know after the Paris attacks. So, so can you like people... summarize it for anybody who hasn't read it? Um, it's his his argument is that. I mean, the title is private, you know, uh, this whole this whole idea is, is an assault on private property, uh, open, open borders. Um, and his argument, um, he's taking from, he's building on what uh, Rothbard had said towards the, I think it was towards the end of, uh, towards the end, Rothbard had kind of shifted his position on this. Um, and, ha and Hoppe, who, uh, mm -hmm. who obviously is a disciple of, uh, um, probably the most hardcore disciple I know of, of Rothbard, right, is, as far as I, the, for what I, you know, I don't, I don't read a lot. I don't read a lot of his stuff. Um, I read, mo I read parts of his, his one big book, but um, the, uh, I don't know, something about him just weirds me out. So <laughs> I never get around to his stuff. But the, the whole, the whole, the whole, the whole, whole idea is that it's, you know, letting, pe you know, having the open borders in the system that we are in allows for this assault on private property where people can't control who's allowed you know to come into their business and stuff because of the already existing anti-discrimination laws that prevent business owners from uh you know a acting upon their freedom of association and saying no i don't for whatever reason i just i don't want to do business with you um you know the, the anti-discrimination laws prevent that um and then anti-discrimination laws also affect people who own you know apartment buildings or any kind of rental or you know anything like that um they prevent people from saying no because somebody can turn around and sue them for saying oh you discriminated against me so the argument goes that allowing more people in will increase the burden on these individuals as well as increasing the burden on the welfare state okay. um okay. so so all right so if if that's the core argument, my my question to Lou Rockwell would be, in the United States, who has the highest claim to property? Yeah, I I see. My mind went there originally too, and I actually started engaging that it, it, with a couple of people in a, in, a, in a couple of discussions over the past few days. Um, and for some reason, I ended up stopping at one point because I think somebody was just annoying the hell out of me. Um, but uh, it's yeah, to me. They, it seems like he's at least my take was he was he's trying to find the purest position on this because he, he mentioned that at some point that they're, they're trying to find the the libertarian line because you know there seems to be this assumption that a lot of libertarians advocate for open borders the, I think part of the problem starts right there because 
I think a lot of people who it, it's very hard. If I can interject for a second, oh, yeah, go ahead. this whole this whole refugee debate to me is very hard because we're running on what should happen versus what is happening happening. Yeah, okay. and then and then also this whole refugee thing is like a like a twentieth or thirtieth order of effect here. Like, what I want to know and ask anybody uh, in this debate is why does Assad have to be toppled? What is he? What has he done that is so bad that all NATO forces and America are trying to get him out of there? Why? I'll tell you why. He went away from the dollar in 2009. Okay? If he was still trading oil in Syria for dollars, Assad would be fine and there would be no refugees. So, that's a th another order of effect there. The other order of effect is who is funding these wars to topple these guys, to put in dollar-friendly leaders. It's the Federal Reserve. So, we're in here arguing about some dumb bullshit that shouldn't even be happening when we should be arguing about why the Fed is in yeah. existence. Yeah, I mean, I think opposition to invasion is, is a given for all anarchists, and that's the point that we should remind ourselves constantly, all the time. Opposition to military action is a given for all of us, right? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sorry. I mean, I know we're supposed to talk about the refugee thing, but no, to it's, me, it's just such... I think I think that's an important point. It's... It's like walking up to a fucking cake and going, hey, that cherry on the top is fucking obnoxious, and we got to do everything we can to stop that. You get what I'm saying? So I'm, I, I'm really curious to hear Jeremy's full argument on this, now that we have, like, the rule. Loop. Before I respond, <laughs> I want to hear Jeremy's full argument, like, in opposition to the Lou Rockwell argument. Jeremy, okay, Jeremy's um, all supporters, right? <laughs> Yeah, see, see, well, that, that's what I was starting to say before, is I think part of the, before I get into my actual argument, I think part of the problem is a lot of people, at least what, what I've encountered in this short time span already, a lot of people who, it, like, it's this, it's, it's the status mentality that still grips a lot of us, and most people don't even realize it until certain situations come up, because this collectivist thing comes in where people are just like, they just assume if you say that, you make a comment about the refugees being able to travel freely. Well, you're for open borders. Well, no, I'm for no borders. Open borders is like, it is, is, it doesn't even, even if. Open uh, means know, at some point they can be closed. Well, yeah, yes, but open or closed means there is a state border of some kind. But even if the 10,000 that you know, King Barry supposedly stated that he would be willing to take in right now, even if they came in. I have a really hard time understanding how that's open borders, because I went and looked this up earlier today, and according to a bunch of different uh, sites I found, uh, roughly 325 million uh, refugees have been allowed into the u.s since 325 since million that's like the whole population of the u.s over time no since 1975 3.25 million oh three point i'm sorry 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 three five that's what i i i, I misspoke no three point <laughs> i misspoke three point three point two five million since 75. That's now in point. all of those <laughs> other instances most of those almost most the, the major influxes all came <laughs> after um crises that the United States had a hand in some way or another. Vietnam, um, you know, the Indochina, it was the, Indochi the Indochinese wars, um, which the U.S. was financing in some way or another, um, or help, you know, helping one side or the other. Um, those influxes. The Fed took, was it, financing it. Oh well, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, but, so the, the, that's when those numbers spiked during, during that, that 30, 40 year time span. But at no time during the, even those spikes were the borders considered open. So I, I think people are, are, are jumping on this and saying, oh, you want open borders, you want closed borders. It's like, no, if you're a freaking anarchist, you should want no borders other than what private property allows, right? I mean, that's, I believe, as far as I know, every anarchist even, I mean, other than the, the ANCOMs who, you know, have their issue with private property, um, mo <laughs> anybody, anybody in the ANCAP or, or voluntarist or, or, or even just anarchists that believe in private property, anybody, who, proper, anybody who's a propertarian there are no borders. So I don't understand this argument because my argument is not that I want the borders open. I 
I have a problem with people trying to keep other people from crossing this imaginary line based on the arguments that were given to me. Because a couple of the first ones I came across from so-called anarchists was all about the, subsidiz the subsidization of these people, whether it be the initial... Um, That's my stance right now. Yeah, either the, the relocation or the possibility, probability, although most of these people are making it an absolute that it will definitely happen that all these people will end up in the welfare system, um, regardless of whether it's some all or whatever. Um, that was their argument. That was their sole argument. Because th then they would say after that, because if they can pay their own way, I'm more than happy. You know, they go right ahead. Come on over. Cross the border. I don't care. Okay, fine. All I want is consistency from people. And if you're going to hold that position, that it's the, that's the only reason you want them kept out, then why are you not applying the same standards to the people that are here now? And I, I'm not talking about recent immigrants. I'm talking about born and raised here two recent immigrants and everything in between I anybody who was already here now who is collecting <laughs> subsidies and, and not paying anything into the system why is that same standard not being applied to them i'm kind that of is confused not a um kept out like you, if someone <laughs> says that they're willing to let somebody pay their own way here how is that um you know if how is that keeping them out or if that was, someone that was, oh sorry or i mean like if if the government doesn't steal money to bring people here, why would there even be a need to keep them out? There's, there's a hypothetical situation. They wouldn't even be on the shores at that point if nobody paid for them to be here. Well, again, uh, there, some of them, no. Other ones, if, if there was no borders, people may want to come in here. You know, like it's like I said, these, I'm just going off the arguments that were presented <clears throat> to me. And this, that was the argument that was presented to me multiple times. And I said, if you're going to keep people out because of those standards, why aren't you try saying, well, these people need to get out too or get off and pay for yourself, which would cause the welfare state to cl collapse, which would get us all what we want. It just it seems like a very odd argument to me because I don't see I, I see the conflating of the hypothetical, like Dave said earlier, of of what we want to see versus what we're dealing with now. And I'm just trying to remain consistent regardless. Okay. Because if you're switching to be pragmatic because of the circumstances, then you start to fall away from the principles. Yeah, and it, it, I'm not advocating for them to open the borders. I'm advocating for them to just dissolve and forget about the borders, which we obviously know is not a possibility, but I've never advocated anything other than that. I just, I, I saw so many people jumping to this like neocon wing where they were like, oh, we got to keep them out and, and <clears throat> dangerous and they're going, to, they're going to add to these, 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 um, add to the welfare and, every, and everything else. And they're taking my money. Well, all right. So let's and make this. Not, but they're not applying. They're not, they're not, they don't have the same vitriol. Let's, let's... These other people that are here doing the same thing. It just. Well, they do. Like, they do. It's just right now, this is the. They do. It's just right now, it's not the hot button topic. What, I mean, put yourself back problem. into your put put yourself back into the conservative mindset for a second. You you want no one on welfare, right? Yeah. So anybody that's gonna come into this the country, uh, especially not as a choice, but they're gonna get basically political asylum here. <clears throat> then everyone else is gonna have to pay for it. That's that's socialist. That's. <laughs> No, no other way to put it. It's not like there's 10,000 individuals saying, hey, I have an extra room in my house. Won't you send two or three refugees and, and I'll help them get on their feet? No one's saying that. They're saying, what can Big Daddy, what can Sky Daddy do? What can, what can government do to fix this problem and how can we force everyone else to pay for it? I mean, my contention is not who's going to pay for it specifically because I always argue that the government's broke like beyond broke like they are literally selling unborn fetuses on the bond market so it's not exactly. a fact that they're stealing from any one person to pay for anything mm -hmm. it's the fact that they're stealing from the unborn and i don't i don't my position is that it's not even appropriate to approach this from the border perspective it's not a matter of open borders or closed borders i agree with you on that because as long as the government 
And I agree with Dave, because as long as the government has the welfare state, as long as there's things like weapons bans and restrictions and suppressions of private property rights, things like borders exists as surrogates for private property rights. So like those are the given replacements. I'm not saying that they are yeah. adequate. I'm not no, saying gotcha. that there's not, you know, uh, tragedy of the commons by any means. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that <clears throat> I think things need to be approached in a logical order and <clears throat> starting from the perspective that anything, any money the government spends is theft is an initiation of force. I kind of agree with the Lou Rockwell point that any bit of money that it spends to move people here and then out of that subset of people that it moved here, regardless of whether it's 20, 30, 40, 50, 80 percent, doesn't matter regardless it literally stole money to move them there it stole money to keep feeding them it stole money to house them it's i'm not calling those people themselves thieves i'm calling the government who taxes the population thieves sure. i understand that there's a thousand other services that we all rely up you know rely upon that involve taxation but to make the argument that <clears throat> it seems like it's like saying who would build the roads, you know what I mean? So if you, have, if you oppose government subsidized taxation or government subsidized immigration, then you oppose all immigration or it so, suddenly becomes this open border versus closed border thing. And I don't think that's the case. Like Here's, I, said, I, don't think, I don't think it's even appropriate to look at it as this open borders versus closed borders because there's bigger fucking priorities that need to be taken care of right now. Like I, not not paying out welfare to anybody, exactly, not stealing yeah. money from the unborn, not selling well, unborn babies on the bond market to fucking provide free goodies to everybody for fucking everything. Sure, no, I, 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 no, not, no, I don't apologize. I, I, I agree um, that that it is more important. Um, you know, like I said, I, I, I start, I started a bunch of conversations about this just because I was getting these other arguments thrown at me that just weren't making sense to me because I'm I'm looking for the consistent position. Sure. And for I feel me, like that's consistent, isn't that consistent? Oh no, 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 that no, no, that that's a consistent position. Absolutely, I, I was talking about like I, I guess I was trying to compartmentalize and, and look at this specific in, in, in situation and, and find a way to be consistent about it, because for me, again, I I totally agree with you. I I think the open borders, closed borders thing is is muddying this because people are arguing over, and I I honestly think that most more people agree than they realize just because they think that by saying people should be allowed in, that the other person is saying open borders, or conversely, because the one person is saying, well, hold up a second here, why should they get any money, you know, like, and making the correct moral argument in that aspect, where it's, you know, like you said, it's, it's the initiation of, for, of force to begin with, to take them, to steal the money and all this shit. So why should they get that? The person on the other side is automatically going, "Oh, well, you want closed borders," and there's a lot of miscommunication that's a, that's going on. That's an ad hominem it's like, attack, dude. It's moving. Not, it's moving not, the goalposts. It's a straw man. It's well, exactly. here, here's here's uh, all. Yeah. I, I was going to say something. A little quick quip to play the 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 status brain here. If we can't let Syrian refugees in because there might be a few bad apples, can we not carry that same logic to government? Oh, not all cops are bad apples. No, no, not even cops. Like government programs, anything that government does. If there's going to be a few bad things that they do, then logically, if we're going to follow the conservative well, bad apple thing, there's, there's then no we got to let go. We got to let go of all of government. Yeah, but if we follow the liberal, not all bad apple thing, then we have to embrace government. So that works both ways. I, I think. Yeah. Uh, I think you know, Jared, what you're saying. Um, you know, it's it's pretty on point. And also, uh, Jeremy, I find you agreeing with you because it's like it's like to me, it's like a false dichotomy. You know, um, that it's like you know, re Republican or Democrat, open borders or closed borders, right? There's only two options. And and it's like it's like uh, somebody asking us, you know. Which monetary policy do you think the Federal Reserve should have, <laughs> or or what do you support, Head Start or Common Core, <laughs> right? Yeah, right. And, 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 and the do I, are those are my only two options. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So oh, so you're yeah, against yeah. education if you don't support of either of them, right? Exactly. Yes. So you so, want stupid so, kids everywhere. So yep. just the idea of talking about immigration presupposes a state, right? And so since we're all anarchists. <laughs> we all think that you know statism should be I, is, a, I, is a hallucination. It's it's a completely you know absurd question to begin with. It's, it's an illogical I, question. I think you nailed it right there, Danilo. And and I think what happens to a lot of people within any kind of political ideology, some people 
don't fully grasp a political ideology and they don't remember that every argument, every debate, every assertion you're going to make has to be based on first principles. Okay? So this whole refugee thing, you break it down the first principles, all right? Is that infringing on someone's uh, private property, their, their own body? Well, yeah, because people are being taxed to pay for this re refugee relocation. They're also being taxed to pay for the war that's causing the refugees. So <clears throat> first principles would say, no, we can't have the refugees because someone has to be stolen from to pay for this. The way you worded that right now, I can see the imprecision where somebody might be kind of butthurt by that because if you're saying, no, we can't have refugees, period, you know what I mean? Or that, all, it, I can see where it's easily inferable that you're saying that every refugee who comes here is stealing or it's, is coming here because the government stole from somebody. But I think that it's possible that people could come here without that situation at all, right? Well, well what, what well, we're talking have, about is... is yeah, what we're talking asylum, about is well, asylum seekers. That's what they. Most of them come on their own. They end up. They end up finding their way, sneaking their way, whatever they have to do to get here, or they get to an embassy, some you know, a U.S. embassy somewhere. But they sneak themselves. They pay themselves to get there. <laughs> they, oh yeah, know? of course. We're we're only talking about this Syrian refugee thing. Obviously, every case is subjective, but you always have to start your assertion off of first principles. And like even the refugee status that the federal government gives you know gives to them it's a guarantee that's not people are going to react to incentives I'm, i would never blame those people for reacting to incentives to an extent especially since they're not like the they, person who probably don't view government as theft you know what i mean that's i'm not blaming uh -huh. them i'm blaming the government on this well, it's well, the government's we, fault yeah and we have to um I think though, Dave, because you, you you said this in one of the threads we had going, um, you just you you all you all you put in was first principles. That was your whole line, um, <laughs> and I, I agree. But something that I, I was thinking about in terms of first principles, um, you know, and and I came across I have a a, a quote from something uh, Robert Higgs put out um, yesterday. After I was thinking about this, it was just coincidental. I came across it, but the whole idea of, you know. The, it, like, because immigration, as Danilo said, it's a state thing. Without the state, we're not dealing with immigration like this. So that should be separate, you know, that whole issue. The first thing that we're talking about here, if you take everything else out, is people, whether they want to come here or go somewhere else, a lot of those people may not want to leave their homes, but they want to get the hell out of there because they're getting bombed to shit, you know, sure. and, and they have nothing. And, you know, sure. Okay. Does okay. anyone call the person that escapes from North Korea into South Korea or China a bad person? Well, no, exactly. So these people, but, these but, people are I mean, looking, but so, South Korea is not going to... over to North Korea, bringing a shit ton of people back after they bomb the fuck out of North Korea and saying, hey, and also, all of you also, have to pay for it now. Also, re opposing America, uh, Syrian immigration to America is not the same thing as rejecting them getting the fuck out of there. It's it, it's not it's not it's no it's not the same as letting as, as that, but it is saying that this territory is off limits. For and Let here's me just the other argument. Well, that's the other argument I want to make is because the government stole to bomb them in the first place. So, mm -hmm. and the government stole from people who aren't born yet. Therefore, for the government to provide a solution for these people, the argument is let the government steal from the initial victims of theft a second time to pay for the externalities of the first instance of no, theft. I, That's fucking wrong. No, and Regardless I, I, of scale or scope or degree or anything like that. I agree. First with principles. You. I, I agree first with you principles. because I'm not making, because that's not the argument I'm making. And that's not the one that, that's not the one that Higgs made either. I know. And I disagree with Higgs. You just, okay. I, I, I feel like the older some of these guys get, the more pragmatic they get. No, the more it's not pragmatic. Even pragmatic. He's, he, he did the same thing I did mentally. I separated the issue of them being it, able of to immigration. leave and go, and, and, go, and, go, and go wherever, go wherever they hmm. want to feel safe. Let me make sure I understand. The government You're... issue seems, the government issue comes after that for me. I that's think I first, see what you're that, That's a first principle. You're saying immigration, the definition... People. The definition of immigration is a government institution. Yes, it's not. Absolutely. It's not moving. Oh, yeah. by means. Oh, yeah. I think the disconnect here is oh, coming yeah. from not not just with us, but with like everybody who's yeah. fucking talking about this right now. Is that people use the word immigration imprecisely, and 
we people in their everyday talk and chat do use immigration interchangeably with moving yes and that is common language already so i think that's probably part of the disconnect here talking about immigration is because i mean i don't disagree with you now that i have your definition of immigration i don't think that most people have look. as precise a definition of immigration look, 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 look. in in germany right now and in sweden housing uh, officials or, or whatnot, city planners, whatnot, go in and go, hey, you have a few open rooms, we're putting refugees here. But this is my house, this is private property. Yeah, we don't give a shit. So I don't think it's gonna come if, down to that. No, 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 no. If they're doing that in Germany- so You can rent from these people Section 8 style, like that's what yeah. it's gonna be like. Well, of course, yeah, but still, private property and self-ownership is subverted in this. At its core, I agree absolutely. I'm just saying it it's, is. it's not it's not putting people in but people's it, attics and bedrooms and shit like that. It's yeah. stealing from unborn see, kids to but provide but section eight. But but that's assuming that we already have private property. <laughs> well, see that that's the problem. That's, that's what, what I started the whole show off of. No, and you were right. You were right. That's part of the problem because again, I think a lot of people. I, I, Jared, if the I state think, owns all right. the land, it's then they can do whatever the fuck they want, right? Hold on, well, yeah. Dave, Jeremy, Jeremy's saying I'm right. I want to hear what he has to say. <laughs> no, I. I, I, yeah, let's right. take a let's take a moment and just absorb this. Go ahead, Jeremy. I, right. I, I believe I, I think you're right. This is a communication issue with defi It's a definitions issue. It's just, it's almost a For semantic sure. issue in For points, sure. and that's where a lot of people are getting hung up. And I ended up getting into a lot of arguments trying to point out that I saw the semantical argument happening. I'm like, hold up, hold up, hold up. We're talking about two different things here. Let's try to and people just they they go and they just like automatically assume. I think we all do that. <laughs> so we we all do. Of course we do. I tr we the the longer we're in this, we all try to get a little better about it and try to be a little more consistent, which is what sure. I set out to do from the beginning. I tried to find the consistent position because like like I said, you know the whole thing with Rockwell, um, yeah, that's the ideal in a society where it's private property, but currently it's not. And my question becomes, okay, Dave, what you were just saying about what's going on in Germany and all these, you know, these people not being able to say no to private property. And yes, here it probably wouldn't happen. Jared's right about that too. They'll just end up with Section 8 housing or, or whatever if they, if they end up needing to go on welfare for any extended period of time. Sure. Either but, way, you break that down to first principles. Someone had to be taxed for the state to buy that land or set up those Section H houses. Absolutely. So how is it fundamentally different from incrementalism or minarchism to support Are they that? building new stuff? Are they building new stuff? Yes, putting... I, live in, I, live in, I live in a city that hosts the, one of the largest Somali refugees settlements in the country. And yes, tax money is definitely used to rebuild the city. I'm not complaining about the things they're rebuilding to an extent, but I'm not enjoying the benefits of that. Rents are fucking skyrocketed here way higher than they would be. I'm not I'm not saying that's the primary cultural thing. Our fucking city hasn't fallen apart because we have a bunch of Somali refugees here by any means, but it does have deleterious effects on capital. Period. No. I mean, there's uh, the, damn. They, they represent a large ten points, Somali Jared, for deleterious. Ref refugees represent a large portion, a lot, and especially I'm in Maine, dude. They rep we have one of the largest settlements in the country. They represent a large portion of our school, and that's resources that all landowners have to pay for, stolen from, regardless of whether or not they have kids to teach those people. And I'm not saying that they're the ones who are stealing, because I feel for them. They're here. Most of them were fucking born here at this point, at this point. But it still has extern there's externalities I'm that not, are associated uh, with it. And I'm not okay. saying that you're making the point. I'm not my my um my passion. No, no, I, I, no, no, no. I, 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 um, I, 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 I understand, and I, I didn't know that about Maine, so, so that, that, that's enlightening. Um, and I, but I, I understand what you're saying. My question, though, is, is for me, that coupled with the argument about private property in the aspect of business owners and such, where these people now get to access to all these things and yada yada yada. I don't understand how that changes from what's already happening just it's because 10,000 more people are added to the mix. Because if they weren't added in this way, they would be added in another way. 
Yeah, I mean, you're just right. Just like they it's, always are. So that's... The increased burden is negligible, and it's definitely not going to break the system by any means. I think <clears throat> I have heard Chris Snyder repost a Lou Rockwell quote saying that much, at least. It's not going to break the system by any means. Yeah, way. yeah, I okay, think, but... But, it, but it is, it's not the only group of refugees that's ever been brought in, and it's, but, but it's let's not look like at it the real increase government relevance, and it's still, it still justifies the whole premise that they fucking stole and bombed, and now we get to steal from you again because we stole from you once, so... Let us keep stealing from you. Yeah, also, but, there's shit going on there, so we gotta keep stealing from you and keep bombing ad infinitum. This shit's been repeating for sixty fucking years. Well, I, and I think yeah. that I But but I here's the Jared, here's ahead, the, ahead, Jared. here's here's oh, the biggest issue, okay? And this is the this is the the film on the brand new monitor that you have to pull off so you can see the picture clear, okay? Everyone's afraid that the government's busting these motherfuckers in to commit acts of terror. Alright? Because everyone knows that ISIS is being funded by the United States and the Zionists. Everyone knows that, all right? Yes. And they're being funded by the Fed. So why wouldn't the Fed want to prop up more spending, more all this, create more security in the state? They do. Yeah, they have so, so this is their ticket, and, and people fear that this is their punch ticket. They, they bring in the Muslim radicals, you create I'm some kind even, of civil disrust. I don't even think that's... The, I, and I'm not saying that it's there's no cause for concern there. I just don't think it's a huge cause for concern. I think that people are... America's fucking well-armed. If anything, if that was a legitimate concern... They're not fucking we up well-armed places. What we should be focusing on is gun control and fucking ridiculing and fuck anybody fucking who says, oh, we need governments to initiate force to prevent the initiation of force. That's what we need to get on because it's not going to be fucking any government policy or anybody's opinion that changes government policy. It's going to be people being able to fucking defend themselves. Yeah. Well said. <laughs> but I, I'm I'm just saying, you know, I'm right about that. People I don't, do. I don't. Explicitly people do fear. But no, I, no, no, no. Yes, I'm not. People do. People do fear that. I can. That Especially in the in the conspiracy minded people, and a lot of anarchists are very conspiracy minded. Yeah, but they they fear that. But something you just said is the reason why I don't understand why they fear it, because because we all know that ISIS has been funded by the Western powers. Because we know that this boondoggle has been going on, why would they need to import them this way? They could bring them in at any time, any way they want to, and probably already have. All right, so, so maybe that's that, the case, that, but that's still not a reason to not resist. And I'm not saying that borders should be closed by any means. I feel like I have to keep saying that before I even make the argument. But that doesn't mean we should let the government be in charge of picking and choosing who they want to bring oh, in. No, no, uh, no, I, I, I'm not going to And then rounding that. a bunch of them up and bombing an area and say, we're going to bring all you in now because we just bombed your area. It's like, that was a random accident. They didn't bomb that area on purpose. Oh, no, they didn't select those 10,000 people on purpose. Well, they're trying to get people out of Syria. They're trying to get people out of Iraq and I Afghanistan mean, not, so they I'm can just rape the resources there. I'm There's no one there to fight. That's what they're I'm trying to do. That they're radicalized by any means, but... <laughs> I mean, it's it's economics. Like first, like you said, Dave. First principles. It's not a matter of degree. It's a matter of principle. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, yeah. Sometimes I just think you have to look at certain situations with a pragmatic eye, and you always have to. So, and you you always have to start with first principles. That being said, I totally support any charity work to bring Syrian refugees here. And yeah, see, everybody who's doing that, you know, I don't. I'm not even a believer in any. Christian Judeo God, but bless you. If that means anything to you, like that's a good thing to do, right? Because you're selecting somebody that wants to better their life, providing the means for it, and you're not stealing from anybody to do it. Oh, exactly. That, that, that's yeah. a possibility. You can. That's a thing. You can do that. That's part of the. That, that's something that I was trying to advocate, and people just, you know, unfortunately, because of the miscommunications, I guess people jump all over this thing, and they think that just because you're saying that, like I said, for me, I, I think it, it's. I, I think I, I. I make the separation because of the immigration thing that you look at it first. That it's just people trying to cross imaginary lines, Absolutely. and we you know, we, yeah, we, I don't we want to leave Danilo out. Sorry, man. <laughs> No, no, that's awesome. I, I you got to butt in, Danilo. No, it's all right. I'm just listening. No, you, you got. You have to. It's a necessity. <laughs> it's all right. I'm respecting Dave's uh, urge to, uh, you know, to, <laughs> to come in. But uh, no, no, no. Like that's like these charities. That's pretty awesome. Uh, that people, you know, I, th I think it's it's so beautiful when I see people create um, solutions that the you know that everybody thinks the state can only do. 
and then you know you see that all the time. That's I mean that's eventually how the state's going to become obsolete, right? By people just creating solutions <laughs> that, that, like you said, do not require theft and coercion and aggression. Exactly. And uh, you know, that's that's what that's how the future is going to be made. That's how you know that's how um, you know voluntary society is is going to be realized. And and uh, the more people can we can get people to understand this sort of thing, the better. So. <laughs> With that yeah. being said, I mean I don't even necessarily I don't even think it's a bad thing that there's quote unquote infighting among libertarians and anarchists because with the way Facebook algorithms work, this is actually good for this <laughs> message because this discussion is coming across news feeds more than it otherwise would have been because of this. If maybe we disagreed with each other more vehemently, more often, stop worrying about political correct bullshit, maybe this would be on the front page of fucking everything all the time by now. You know what I mean? People have been thought. playing this. Let's be a nice anarchist. I'm not saying be rude to people, but if if you present your case more than three times on why the initiation of force is wrong and someone's still like, but you, uh, social contract, it's your duty, and they're fucking shouting you, you know, down and trying to, like, personally attack you, fuck those people. Fuck them. Tell them, fuck you. You're, trying to, you're advocating for the initiation of force against me. If somebody was doing that on the street, you'd probably have stronger words for them than fuck you. You'd probably punch them in the fucking face after they started coming after you. <laughs> You know what I mean? I, it's a threat of force. It's what it Jared, is. Jared is known for his delicacy and his subtlety. So. <laughs> yeah, I really am. I think, for t I think the – you have a, mi a myriad of reasons why people are, like, against this. And, you know, some of it's race-based. Race some of it's just out-and-out -out protectionism. And some of it's just they're tired of being taxed to pay for boondoggles. I <clears throat> I mean, people Listen. are tired of being taxed for everything. I th I'm not. This is my perspective. Is it's first principles. I'm not. I am tired of being taxed, but I'm just tired of precedents for supporting the initiation of force and precedents for stealing from people. Whether Agreed. it's this, whether it's another thing, when does it fucking stop? When does the fucking straw break the camel's back? When do you fucking just push back and say no? And if right now I'm talking about this, I don't give a fuck. I'm sorry, I man. Did. This is. I did. I wish more people would join me. I, yes. I, I have. <laughs> I don't give a fuck about this more than any other fucking initiation of force, I'll be honest. But this is what people are talking about right now. And I, and well, I, yeah, so, I think that's so, important to point out is that, is that uh, you know, we got to look at the bigger picture. As anarchists, you know, we, we don't object to a particular president or a particular law or a particular war, right? We object to the idea of statism and everything that it. encompasses it, right? So, so, you know, when people, just like, you know, people ask us what monetary policy should the Federal Reserve have, then that's a good conversation to get into what is the federal reserve how much do you know about it <laughs> and, it's begging and the, the question of what it. monetary policy should they have they shouldn't even fucking exist why are you trying exactly. to get me to admit yeah. they should exist exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, so you know people um but uh you know, they, it's appealed to antiquity right it's been here you know we you yeah, know as long as we know and our parents know and our grandparents so it's always going to be here so it's a given <laughs> to them so i think the main point i wanted to drive i guess to this whole thing and if you're new to volunteerism or you just happen to hear this and you're like, what the hell are these crazies yelling about? We always start from the first principle of self-ownership, okay? And if anything infringes upon self-ownership, we're against that. So this is a clear situation of self-ownership being infringed upon. That's why we're against the refugees. It doesn't make us a right-wing neocon that it's, hates it's Muslims. It's also why we're against the income tax. It's why we're against forced fucking Medicare plans. It's why we're against an excise tax. It's why we're against the sales tax. It's why we're against theft, period. Yes, yeah. so... Well, you know, it, they're, it's, they're it's having... logical consistency, and I, that's kind of my point. Is to, it, If you're going to accept subsidized immigration as a given how is that different than minarchism or incrementalism if you're going to shout down everybody who tries to point out the economic externalities to stealing from people regardless of the degree to it how is that different from being a social justice warrior or a lefty like just calling someone an islam there's no difference out. you know what i mean like it, there is no difference no, it, it, there there isn't. I don't I don't disagree with that. But you know, like I said, like, but again, I'm not saying I'm not saying any of you guys are doing it. But I am seeing it happen. No, oh no, and I, I see it. I've seen it happen too. And unfortunately, I got thrown on the other side of that. Everybody kept thinking I was trying to make that argument, and I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm not attacking you for that. I I get that. Believe me, we're on the same page. That's you definitely know. an example of that. Unfortunately, I think in terms of, like you well, yeah, but about. but also unfortunately, the other thing about what Dave just said is, yeah, you're right. 
one of the first principles is about self-ownership and unfortunately these individuals or at least most likely the majority of them are also having the same problem they're having their self-ownership which is why people should voluntarily feel for them i'm not just well, two, not two wrongs don't make a right. I mean, sitting back in your armchair and letting the, 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 government not, do all your charity for you by stealing from all your neighbors. It's not two wrongs not making a right. How, like, you're, you, I'm not saying two wrongs make a right. I'm saying that they're also in the same situation. They're no, they are. Well, yeah, I, I know that they're in a worse situation. Well, yeah, you're right. They're, they're in a much so, worse situation. I feel for them. But if we're, if we're, let's just take welfare off the table here, okay? Wouldn't it make much better sense to maybe... I don't know, annex some areas and protect it with the military over there so those people could resemble any kind of or uh, any kind of resemblance of the life they once had before all this shit went down. Um, I mean, cha like, who wants to... I mean, well, who, who living in fucking Benghazi or wherever the... Name, name a place in Syria, who over there wants to be in fucking Dayton, Ohio? Like, I'm I guarantee sure, you not, not one of them. I want to interrupt well, you, Dave. See, like, that's a, I want to point that out. absolutes, with. Dave. When you when you go and rebuild countries, when how when we blow up Iraq and then Halliburton rebuilds it, people fucking talk shit about Halliburton. People say, "Oh, government contractors, why are we rebuilding a country?" Those are all the liberals and the same fucking people that are saying, "Why are you against the government paying for immigration to come over here?" So really, I mean, one of my questions is, how is using stolen pack taxpayer money to bomb a country and rebuild it? fundamentally any different from using oh well, it's it's not money to bu I, I, I was asking to more of a into into here they could go anywhere in the world they oh i know in saudi arabia what has a hundred million tents that they uh ha and they basically have cities set up for refugees but they're taking none and that's what i'm saying is so to say that re rejecting syrian immigration to the u.s is begging the question that you're rejecting all syrian immigration it's not true you can't. It, that claim can be made. That's a straw man argument. Yeah, you're right. It, it is. Okay, and yeah. uh, I, I agree with that. I never made that claim. Though. I'm not I saying. I'm not saying. I, I, I think I, I think I made a pragmatic statement. You know, like I'm fine with her coming over if we end all welfare programs, including corporate welfare. But that's. One I mean, step at a time, man. Uh, of course. But you know, it's like. I'm not going to say we've blown up the world, but the government that flies flags over our landmass has blown up a lot of the world and a lot of people view us as very responsible for that and i think that there's a lot of things that have to be done the i mean there's nothing that we really have to do there's going to be an economic collapse i mean anybody who's following the real world with <laughs> even a little bit of austrian economic knowledge knows that they're just propping up a bubble that's going to explode again that could very well be the undoing of the federal government so that's whatever people do is move what we're discussing right now is just going to affect how well, things get rebuilt and how we deal with it from then on At i, th that point, I there think won't uh, be there won't be borders it's I, I think what's going to happen is, is the uh, dollar is going to collapse, and then that that collapse is going to collapse a lot of other con uh, countries' currency, and mainly like the pound and the euro, and the 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 won. They might I think survive. Russia will be okay in all this, believe it or They're not. They're trying to back themselves with gold right now. They might survive it. Either way, what's going to happen is is the central banks are going to come out and say, "Hey, you know, we have a digital currency, and everyone's going to use it," or there's yeah. going to be bad news. Or, I mean, I think that private blockchains will probably always beat out public. Or I think public bro blockchains will beat out private blockchains. I don't think that you can privatize blockchains and really have it compete with something that's open source and free. No, and I, that's why I think, uh, you know, the central planners didn't have Bitcoin in mind when they were trying to design a world world currency. And you see them scrambling now to implement. You see a Microsoft has a... Uh, project right now to implement blockchain in their Azure client to provide secure communications. So the private companies are jumping all over that right now because they're like, shit, we fucked up. They didn't get on it fast enough. It's too little, too late. I think that blockchain mm -hmm. thing, it's I, it, the real undoing of the state's going to be behind a wall of encryption. I, I, I do too. It's like, I and I tell everybody right now, if you're hearing my voice, open your fucking app store button or whatever you got and search up signal by whisper systems and download it and refuse to talk to people unless they're on whisper all it is is encrypted it's open source encryption no one can no one can see what you are sending to another person unless they grab your phone and read it and nice. encrypt your phone all modern smartphones come with encryption now
just it's in I the mean, settings encrypted that that technology could be applied to pretty much everything they fractionalize shares on the stock market in the same way the federal reserve fractionalizes deposits in the banks they just print new shares from nothing if you tether shares of a company to the blockchain they can no longer counterfeit shares they can no longer run fractional reserve shares <laughs> it right. literally right. has the 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 potential to put wall street out of business i'm not the genius who's going to implement it by any means but there's plenty of people working on that plenty of yeah. new people interested in it every day and the whole thing is just fucking exciting as hell isn't yeah it? supply and demand is is is, is something I preach on this show all the time. No matter what any government or anybody or two individuals try to do, you can never subvert supply and demand to a good result. It always leads to bad problems. And that is an absolute, and it always leads to bad problems. Yeah. If you're using force to manipulate supply and demand, you're breaking windows. I mean, you could win a Nobel Prize, uh, Nobel Peace Prize for it if your name's Paul Krugman. <laughs> Paul Krugman. Paul Krugman couldn't think himself out of a wet bag, dude. On a, on, a, <laughs> on, a, on a side note, Contra Krugman is now one of my favorite podcasts. You guys listen to that yet? Oh of my course. god! Of course. I don't really get into economics as much as I do oh, everything it, else. It doesn't. It, it's not even economics, man. It's Woods and it's Murphy good. just tearing, tearing him up, tearing him a new asshole every week. It's so great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So a, sh a shout out to the Contra Crew podcast. So, 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 do we want to let Danilo talk for a long time? Yeah, let me just <laughs> let me yeah. just say that you guys are talking a lot about Bitcoin, and it, it reminded me of a conversation I had recently with a with a mother who's not a homeschooling mother, but I met her at uh, this ballet class my my, my daughter goes to. So she's a ballet she, mom. She sends her kid to. It's actually school. it's actually Danilo's ballet class. He's trying to cover and say. Oh. And so, go get so your tutu, Danilo. I don't, I don't usually have a, a chance to talk to her, but this time I was able to it. And I didn't come right out and say, you know, public school sucks, but I went like a backdoor method, and I was basically talking about the internet. Oh, a backdoor <laughs> method with a ballerina <laughs> mom. All right. Backdoor method with a hot, hot non-homeschooling mom. All right. Woo, Danilo phrasing. Uh, no, no, so basically, so basically saying how, you know, um, you know, just 20 years ago when the internet was getting started, or even a few years before that, you know, how many parents could have predicted the internet, right? Could have predicted Google, YouTube, Wikipedia. No one. Uh, any of that, right? Now, every time we go to public school, we have these politicians that say, this is what you're going to need to know when you're 20, right? When you're out and you're into the w workforce, this is the, the information you're going to need to know. So basically they're saying we can predict the future. <laughs> oh, not now, even politicians. I want to point out just a quick interruption. Bureaucrats. Bureaucrats, right, right. Bureaucrats, bureaucrats. right. Well, anybody who yeah who who devises those curriculums, but 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 this is the this is the insanity of it, is that, is that um, you know they think they can they can engineer these people's futures and 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 there's not really no negative consequences and I'm and I'm just telling you that this is the beauty of the internet that that it's opened up this enormous treasure trove of information that's just a click away for everybody's basically free, right? And and I think this is what's really going to um, you know, decentralized information, right? For everyone to, to get a hold of, and and now there's you know a lot of companies that are trying to to uh, connect even the ro remote areas of the world that don't have internet access, and you know connect them. And so you know once everybody's connected, like what do borders even matter? They don't matter at all. You know once everybody's connected, you can talk to somebody in Afghanistan, in Iraq, in Syria. I was just talking to somebody no. in England before I the have, show. I have friends that I've met on SoundCloud that live in Iran. Yeah. Yeah, countries are, you know, it's an obsolete. It's so an obsolete. so what you're saying is is the school is teaching the wheels on the bus go round and round. What they sh <laughs> what they should be teaching is like the 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 <laughs> something on the uh, hovercraft goes wool wool wool. <laughs> or those are, those are those are illegal in New York now, I think. They they hovercraft are. hoverboards. Hoverboards <laughs> now illegal in New York. Oh, really? I didn't know. That. Too many people hurt themselves, so the state had to step in. Of course. Of course. Yeah. Actually, I was I, I, just today. I was Big brother to, knows best. I was I was talking to a man just today about uh, he's a oh, trucker. Oh great, it's a like, man. Like, for like for like thirty years, he's a trucker, and, and I, I haven't I haven't really talked to you know like when I meet somebody who's in a new profession, I'm like I like to get as much information. But the, oh my god, it's amazing how regulated that industry is. You know the, you of know course. how many 
Oh my god. I, I almost became a TSA agent. They're I know. Not a, they're not allowed. That, yeah, they're not. A, they, they, they're only allowed to drive a certain amount of hours, and they have to. They have to check in and weigh like every like, and then the, their trucks are inspected up the yin yang and. Oh wow. And yeah, it really would amazing. be. It, it would. It would. Yeah, it, it'd be wonderful. I mean, a lot of those things would probably be um, looked for in a free society, but it's it's all controlled by the state DOTs. Mm -hmm. So it's not, there's a monopoly on it. In a free market scenario, like I said, those things would probably still, uh, some of those things would probably still exist. I mean, they wouldn't be as onerous as they are now, but the problem would- probably with... have a lot of people uh, transporting things unsafely too. I mean, oh, sure. there's probably, a, I mean, we can't deny that the state's regulations probably does keep some sun, unsafe activity. But they also the stifle well, innovation. That's well, true. Whereas, that's like, true. there could be that's biometric true. truck keys that log your hours, <laughs> you know, but that the state's preventing from happening, making a much more safe, safer environment than... I mean, they it's essentially an entirely subsidized industry because they need to build the interstate highway system, which still isn't paid off to make it happen. Mm -hmm. So without that, that industry wouldn't even be fucking competitive. It's broken window fallacy. So if they hadn't broken the windows to make the interstate highway system, the capital that was invested in those trucks would have been invested in something else to move shit around. Sure. Good well, point. The, yeah. First principles. But the, the, the one thing you said about how there, there's probably, you know, the regulations cause unsafe actions to probably happen now. Of course they do. It increases. The same with everything else. Absolutely. Same, 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 with, same with the prohibition on drugs. I mean, it, they it, they decrease unsafe actions within their own self-created paradigm. Yes, but they create worse ones because they because they, their paradigm is worse than what would otherwise sure. been if it, their paradigm didn't exist. Because they put well, they put people in positions, no matter what it is, whether it's trucking, whether it's drugs, whether it's anything, where if you want to obtain something or you want to do a job or whatever it is that is not aggressing against somebody else but you're prevented from doing so because of some idiotic regulation or some ridiculous law but you still want to go ahead and do it because you're not doing anything wrong then yes you the 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 safety level obviously drops through the floor because it's like well now you have to take all these additional risks that would not exist sans the state which you know it's it's, it's unfortunate that more people don't see that that's why um, we do this right of course but the, the one other thing I did want to say is what you were saying before about Bitca Bitcoin, Jared. See, it's funny because I, I've said before that I, I came to a point where I kind of gave up on the dream of seeing any kind of, you know, full scale free society before I die. And I came to peace with that. And I was just I was just going to work as hard as I could while I'm here now and do everything I could to make it better for my kids and give them a better opportunity to get to that plateau. Um, and the internet, I, I've always, I've always seen as a ridiculously important tool for us. But I think Bitcoin has actually started to change my mind now. Because what you were saying about the blockchain technology and everything, like that, when that, not just when it hit, but when it became a little more mainstream. Because even, you know, even the beginning, it wasn't very, it wasn't even mainstream in our circles. Like a lot of people were like pushing it off, like you know. Um, a lot of people who are a lot of people still do. Uh, they do. Well, yeah. but they, it's that, more accepted and, though. I think. I mean, it solves the problem that is also the premise for why government exists, and that's trust between people. We don't trust mm -hmm. each other naturally. Blockchain allows people to trust each other with as little overhead as is humanly fucking possible. It literally, financially, economically renders government completely obsolete in my opinion private arbitration private security the right of the individual to delegate itself against self-defense out to other people and hire it to other people that is something that will keep people safe people being able to defend themselves that will keep people safe people caring about private property that will keep people incentivized to want to keep houses and shit from burning down you don't need the government to have a fire department you don't need the government to have a police department you don't need to have the government to have dispute resolution you don't need any of that shit it's all it, not only does it rely on a separate class of people to be morally superior than everybody else and not abuse their power to get away with initiating force, it is infinitely more expensive and less efficient than using something like blockchain. 
infinitely. It's not even possible that it's going to outcompete it. They're, it's dreaming if it thinks it's going to. So therefore, yes, anarchists, anarcho-capitalists should be extremely fucking optimistic right now. That's my perspective. <laughs> No, I, I agree. Like I said, it's it, it shifted my perspective because I, I was one of the people that kind of ignored it for a while. And then when, when Dave finally harassed me enough that I decided to get into it, I was like, all right, you're right. It was a good decision. And, <laughs> I, I, like, and, and I started reading and learning more about it. And I was like, all right. So, uh, yeah, I, I think now now I start to think again, there there's a possibility that I, at the very least I can see the collapse of you know this what they particular just state. Today. They just announced today was Bitcoin debit cards in America. Sweet. <laughs> but, well, you know, I just wanted to tell somebody, if you're not sold on Bitcoin, I think it was Roger Ver or one of those guys, they were in, like, uh, Zurich, and they were talking, like, it was like a world banking summit, and they go up there because all these bankers want to know what's Bitcoin or about Bitcoin and, you know, how they can integrate it into their business model and stuff. And, you know, he walks on stage and he goes, hey, uh, raise your hand if you own Bitcoins currently. Not one person in the fucking crowd's hand was down. So if the bankers... Are buying Bitcoin? You probably should too. <laughs> one Bitcoin might be worth a hundred million US one day. I know that yeah. sounds crazy, but it could be. Yeah, but if a hundred million US buys a cup of coffee, then it doesn't mean much, right? Well, of course. <laughs> yeah. I mean, everything's subjective, right? <laughs> we're just we're, I'm just trying to put it in the current paradigm. Is that the current the hyper, is that before the hyperinflation, right? <laughs> I I went out for a second, <laughs> lost internet. Sorry, oh. guys. That's okay. That's fine. Uh, do you guys want to wrap up and we'll uh, we'll get out of here? Yeah, you want any, yeah. any uh, last words for uh, the uh, quote unquote state immigration crisis? <laughs> Man, stop shouting insults at each other! What the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> Calm down, but get mad by all means. Fucking get all mad. Comment on each other's posts. Make anarchism go viral on Facebook. Let's do this. Oh yeah, we're we're doing that in the in the propaganda factory every day. Yeah. Um, those, those Jimmy's muffins. Yeah, yeah, I, I call it a uh, tickling the, uh, tickling the cognitive dissonance. Uh, you know, just poking it a little bit. Like, hey, what's that in there in your head? Um, but you know, like this whole refugee thing. Like I said, come at everything with first principles. That's really, you've got to be logically consistent, or people. Are, that's why no one's voting for Rand. All right, that's why his really? poll that's why his numbers are shit because he's not logically consistent. You can't be like a neocon warhawk one day and then you can't say, "Oh, we've got to shut down the NSA," but then go if Snowden steps on the, the US soil again, I'll make sure he hangs. Like you can't that's not logically consistent. So, that's why you're, you know, people don't trust other people is when they break away from their logical consistency mm -hmm. and that's when Lou Rockwell's shit pops up. And it throws everybody for a loop because they probably didn't read it. They probably just read the art, uh, the the headline, and they or the, made or their or assumption. Or the first paragraph. Yeah. And I think it's interesting too because if you look at it, if, <laughs> yeah. If you look at that whole situation, I haven't read the, the Lou Rockwell article, but the even the scholars among the Mises Institute, Lou Rockwell, you know Robert Higgs, uh, Jeff Dice, they don't all agree with each other by any means, but they still get along. They still put on presentations and they still teach people very valuable and important lessons. And I think that I mean Lou Fien told me he hates bacon, and I said there's no way you could humanly hate uh, bacon. So I, guys, I'm a I'm actually a <laughs> vegan. I don't eat any meat or cheese at all, but we can. That's still be friends. that's terrible. Why? Lou is never going to come back on the show then. He already, he already, he already nailed it. No, 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 no. Now he has to come back and defend. <laughs> Against bacon? No. Next episode of Seeds of Liberty. Bacon? Good or no? Good uh, or no? No. Uh, we all know it's good. Yes. <laughs> There's no debate there. So, so Jared, Jared, it's, a, let me... it's objectively good. <laughs> objectively good bacon. It is objectively good. So, Jared, it seems to me like, because I, I, I know a couple of vegan anarchists, right? And some of them focus more on their anarchism, and some of them focus more on their veganism in their, I guess, activism. You know, sure. but you seem to be, to me, focus more on the anarchism. Would, would that be correct with you? I am primarily and wholeheartedly focused on anarchism. I am right. not trying to tell people what to eat. That's the last of my. So, are you like a now. vegan for health reasons or for moral reasons? Like, what's good? I don't know. It's. 
<clears throat> I can't say it's not health reasons because I kind of incrementalismed my way into veganism. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> As I, <laughs> As I, 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 I you're gonna, no, no, no. You're gonna, you're gonna fold. You're gonna eat a, As, a, a stack I, of so ribs. You, so, so you were a minner meatist for a while. Is that how that works? <laughs> yes. Minner meatist. <laughs> no, 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 no. Listen, 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 listen. listen. I'm, I, I was never a huge guy, but I lost like forty pounds in the last year. Not even really changing my exercise patterns or anything like that. So I'm like, I'm way healthier than I was before. I have. I you have could like, have done that with paleo. I did. <laughs> sure, but I also had like gastro, uh, gastrointestinal inflammation in a lot of different ways that I don't have anymore. And okay, that's because you weren't abiding by. Dr. Dre's first rule. Oh, yeah? Yeah. What's his first rule? You know it. Oh, man. I'm lost. S smoke weed every day. I actually was abiding by that. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I feel a lot better now, man. I lost a lot of weight. My body works a lot better. I feel happier. My mood's Hey, better. whatever's making you happier, man, do it. It's I just... I if couldn't do it. That's an example or uh, uh, an incentive for anybody else to want to get into veganism. Yeah, you might lose weight, you might feel better. But I'm not I was doing a, I was doing like a where I could I could only be omnivore one day a week. So like the rest of the week I was vegetarian. So one day a week I would eat meat, and then that's what, what I was doing for a long ass time. Yeah, and then what ended up happening is is I was like, fuck this, I want chicken wings. <laughs> <laughs> I I could I I can't like I can't live like if someone said Dave, Dave you, iron his iron will you, if you if if if, if, if something happened like I go into the doc <laughs> I, when it comes to food I'll eat anything like I've had I've I've had vegan food like that are like there's our next show we're doing food it's back so here. good <laughs> oh dude we'll if if I if if I if I developed an allergy to chicken wings, I would just rather be dead. Uh, it won't be chicken wings. Don't worry about it. <laughs> All right. All right, boys. All right. Sign well, us off, I just, Danilo. I, I just I, I just want to say, I, I, Jared, I appreciate you coming on. I think this was oh, a good discussion. I think I think I think you, I mean at the very least I think you and I cleared up our our, our misunderstandings from you from the I other day. I think that we really disagreed. I don't really think anybody really disagrees about anything other than semantics and the fact that it is kind of emotionally charged. If for no other reason than nobody can type fast enough as as fast right. as they want to type to get right. their message exactly. across Facebook. Uh, exactly. Well, I don't know. Like I said, I've come across enough people that I think definitely disagree. Um, but it's all right. Yeah, you know. sure. I don't. I don't think that regarding conversations that may or may not have happened in like the seeds of liberty group or page that i think there was less disagreement than the participants may have perceived in the mm -hmm. moment no like i said I, I i wholeheartedly agree about that and hopefully people will listen to this and uh, maybe reconsider what they were arguing for or against and realize that you know i hope so too we can actually uh you know like I, and i think that the point you made about um the bickering being good for us in the long run um, at least uh, on our edge rank type deal. <laughs> uh, I think it's, it is. It's a very good I think one. It I, is. Think, I think more people should. Well, groups I, groups I don't so. get edge ranked. Well, you know what? I just think it doesn't matter. These conversations are going on people's private walls this whole week. That's uh, correct. Yeah. Yeah, the true. group is public. I've been I've been on I've been on multiple people's walls having these same conversations with sometimes the same people, sometimes not. So there's a lot, you know. But you know, like I said, for me. I just I, I, I managed to separate the two just because I, I think the immigration thing is, is I'm still stuck state. on the con confederate flag thing yet I, I haven't caught up to the guys the... I am still stuck on the ice bucket challenge damn you out you, you, you beat me I'm still watching chocolate rain dog alright <laughs> chocolate rain you don't remember that on that note, I think we'll let Jared go. <laughs> All, right. All right, so thanks a lot, Jared, for coming on. Real pleasure. Uh, thanks for having me again. You guys have uh, done this before. You can check me out on SoundCloud, jerry one j 3443 one Check me out on Facebook under the same moniker. You can also find me under Jared Howe. Right. Oh, yeah, check out his music. Awesome stuff. He's going to... He's gonna be the, uh, uh, the the he made a Seeds of Liberty uh, rap song for us, so we're gonna try to include that in the intro. So that's, we're that's yo, and wh where are my Patreon supporters at, yo? Get on there, <laughs> one dollar a month. That's all we're asking, one dollar a month. One dollar a month, right? Every subscriber gets one dollar. It's awesome. 
So very good. Thanks for thank you very much. Wonderful conversation. Thanks um, again, guys. So anybody wants to help us out, like, share, subscribe. You can uh, you know Bitcoin uh, or Patreon help us out. You know we could use we could use the uh, the encouragement. We <laughs> we always need it. So um, this is the PC's Liberty Podcast. Uh, wishing everyone have a wonderful day. Take care. Nice. Peace. Peace.